I have built an Arduino driven LED matrix display, which I can control with my phone and my PC. I have chosen a rather unusual way to transfer data, and this video will explain what stupid idea I came up with. Using a Wi Fi or Bluetooth compatible controller like this one would have worked, of course. I could have made programs for my PC and my phone that send data or run a simple web server on the device itself and have it run in my home Wi-Fi. But I don't like Internet of Things thingies that know my password. So I went a much more primitive road. I went to my local cheaper store trying to find a device that I can hack and that can receive data from most computers and phones without special software. This is a 5 euro Bluetooth speaker exactly what I need. I can pair the speaker to my sending PC and send tones and the Arduino is connected to the speaker and analyzes the tone signal to decode the data. This is the speaker PCB that connects to the Arduino. There is not much on there, an all-in-one Bluetooth receiver and DAC and a class D amplifier and the battery charging circuit. I disconnected the output from the AC and I feed it directly into the analog port of the Arduino. My first idea for the data transfer was to use something binary such as sending peaks for bits, but it quickly turned out to not work because the signal precision of the Bluetooth chip is very limited. Single peaks don't always make it all the way through and even longer tones are sometimes distorted at the end before silence. As solution? I developed the probably slowest data transfer system ever. My system is based on detecting single tone frequencies. The Arduino scans the analog signal 8000 times per second and counts the peaks for 25 milliseconds. In that time, a 120Hz tone will produce 3 peaks, a 240Hz tone 6 peaks and so on. And I define that tone 1 is between 2 and 4 peaks, tone 2 is between 5 and 7 peaks, etc. pp. I use 17 different tones, 16 for data and a tone for start and stop. In idle mode there is silence. When the system detects the end of silence, it waits 5 milliseconds and then counts the peaks for the next 25 milliseconds. Then it waits for silence before the next tone. A start tone activates data decoding and after that two tones code for one byte. Another start tone stops the decoding. The last byte recorded is a checksum that tells the system whether it received everything correctly. Data transfer happens at breathtaking 10 bytes per second. Sending one screen still takes only 5 seconds because each byte codes for 4 pixels. For the sending part, I made a simple website, nothing fancy, just HTML and some JavaScript. There's an onboard JavaScript system called Audio Context that allows creating and sending waveforms, and this works fine on most browsers and systems. I can draw pictures with that website and beam them to the display, and I can also send text. I have also finished the hardware part of my display. I made that wooden bezel on a Shapoko CNC mill and painted it green. A cheap picture frame comes in front of the LEDs and this wooden box contains all the electronic behind that. I also wanted to use the display as clock. The internal clock of the Arduino is pretty unprecise, but I thought I can just compensate that error. That did not work, I couldn't get it more precise than a second per minute or so. So I went back to the cheapo store and looked out for a time measurement device. Actually amazing that you can get a clock for that little money. From the clockwork all I need is this piece, the quartz driven motor driver. Hooked up to a battery and my scope I can see that it creates one peak per second alternating positive and negative. This drives a little solenoid motor. When the scope's ground lead is connected to battery minus the peak of both output wires is positive relative to this ground and each wire makes a tick every 2 seconds. The voltage is too little to turn a digital pin on the Arduino to 1, but it can drive a transistor which switches the input to 0. My program catches that signal and synchronizes itself every 2 seconds. 
Oh, and I soldered wires to the solenoid before assembling the leftovers of the clockwork, so that I can do stupid things now, like connecting my frequency generator to it and have it speed around unpredictably. The clock is pretty precise and I can simply beam the current time onto the display. I will make other clock faces later, maybe. A binary clock, for example. Right now, the display sits on my desk and is happy. Well, actually, I destroyed the case again, because I kinda found it ugly and too black and too large. But a newer, smaller frame is already planned. You can see the result on my Hackaday page when it is done. You can also find the Arduino code and the KiCad schematics on there when you are interested. That's it for now, see you next time.